at him. Noisy. Hello, everybody. Everybody. Welcome back to the Jeremy Swenson Racing Channel. We're here at Pikes Peak International Raceway. You're like, I'm way in, aren't I? I'm moving closer, trying to you get audio. Come here. Oh. It's fine. People like my pores. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we're here. It's really hot. Uh, we've qualified. We qualified second. I think we can run the pace Hike Cotter got us. I think we could run his pace for a lap, but uh, I don't... I don't think we're going to be able to keep up, so we will see. I'm going to go out and give her my best, <laughs> and we'll give it a shot and see what happens. So, wish me luck. Good luck. He's going to do great. got myself a new microphone and I'm going to overlay audio as we go to kind of talk you through what's going on. Here we are coming to the start of the first race. I'm outside row one, second position um, with Brian Heikotter and bang we're off and going, hitting gears. Um, he and I left about exactly the same time and I pulled maybe a fender on him. Uh, meanwhile here comes Eric Jensen if you look to your left. Uh, from the third row he comes out of nowhere. Um, we're all three wide open here. Um, we're not quite three wide because we're not really overlapped, but I am trying to stay to the right here, hoping Jensen stays to the left. He does. I break super late um, to try to get up ahead of him, and this is about the only chance I have is of winning this race is to get out and get going um, right away and hope that High Cotter gets held up, which is exactly what happened. So um, if I was a drinking man, I'd be buying drinks for Eric Jensen because uh, he was basically responsible for me getting this race win. So uh, anyway, we're going to jump ahead here in just a minute um, to not bore you because this race was basically um, just me out trying to drive pace laps um, or hot laps by myself and watching my mirror because I knew High Cotter was faster and he was coming and that is what happened. But uh, anyway, so we're going to jump ahead in just a few seconds. Um, but we're hitting just about 100, I think, here. Um, we're still wide open. There's a giant bump there. You saw it. The GoPro stabilizes a fair bit of it. But uh, it's a pretty aggressive bump. Um, and, but we're still wide open all the way up to this braking zone. I hit about 116 miles an hour. Um, smash the brakes. Go down a few gears. Off to the left. So let's jump ahead back onto the straightaway. This is, I believe, the last lap of the first race. You can see how much closer Hike Cotter is now. Um, my tires had fallen off. Um, a bit. Uh, I was in the low 102s were my fast laps with fresh tires, um, but this was a really hot session and it, we, I was dipping now up into the 103s, the low 103s for lap times, um, and High Cotter used up his Hoosiers trying to catch me, and uh, so there wasn't, wasn't a lot of grip to be had here. It was management, and there you can see I pushed a little too hard in trying to get by a lap car and got a little loose but um, this is a really fun track to race it's, it's not my favorite time attack track but as far as racing goes it was quite fun um, but there isn't a whole lot of elements to it either um, but the infield with with tons of people watching is still pretty fun and there's a lot of chances for little slides and everything and i um, trying to get a, a neutral drive through a corner with the steering wheel straight is is pretty fun so anyway, going through the gears here, we're finishing up this lap, um, and we got the checker flag, we got the win on the first race somehow, um, even though we were not the fastest car there. So thanks, Eric Jensen. Appreciate you, bud. Nice job, dear! I'm so proud of you! How'd it feel? 
Ja. Ja. Hi. Didn't see that coming. Congrats, you did awesome. Thank you. I gotta go. Are you recording? Yep. I gotta go thank Eric Jensen. Why? He held up pipe cotter long enough. I don't think that race was mine if he hadn't held up uh, pipe cotter. Something happened to him. He never crossed the finish line. No, Jensen? Yeah. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. But like the first three laps or two right. laps, he held him up. And he had to jump to start because he was okay. all over. He passed us both before turn one. He learned that from me. <laughs> Which isn't good. We we don't promote that. Congrats, baby! It was fun to watch. You're so nervous. <sighs> Me too. Well, I wasn't really nervous. Other than up there, I just every time I go around, I'm like, man, if that tire let go, I'm in the wall, and it's gonna hurt a lot. You didn't hear that, Pam Swenson. Okay. Okay. Love you. Let's get ready for the next one. Smash buttons. Love you. Bye. So that was fun. Not at all how I expected that race to go, but that's, I suppose, part of what makes racing fun is you never know. Um, so we line up, we had the second fastest lap to Height Cotter, so he and I will start the same spots. He'll be inside row one, I'll be outside row one. So next race, <laughs> strategy is basically the same as try run too wide and maybe get an edge on him, maybe side draft him a little um, if he's out up front and maybe hope that I can clear him into three, but even still, he's got more pace throughout the whole race. So I would have to basically, I wouldn't be blocking him necessarily, but I would be taking away the, the good line is about the only strategy I can have to win this next race. So that's what I'll probably try, but I'm also not gonna be a jerk and I'm not gonna block him for the whole race. So if he's there and has more speed, I'm not gonna necessarily, necessarily let him by, but I'm also, not going to race him and cause us to get tangled up with third and fourth and fifth and everybody else so that's the plan for race two which starts in just a little bit yay race two two so uh we started in the same position outside first row there's brian uh, he and i are just kind of accelerating together you can see it's lightly raining uh we we're both wide open here well i can't speak for him i think he was too but i didn't lift um justin is right to my left here right behind brian and i've tried to break late here so does brian which uh so that doesn't allow me to get around the outside um, so i pull in behind him Try to make sure I don't lose another position. As you can see, Justin's right behind me. And now, I'm just uh, trying to see if I can stay with Brian. And you're about to see, um, he makes a little mistake heading up um, back onto the uh, front straight here. I forget what these, this is like turn 8 and 9 maybe. Uh, anyway, right here I try to set up and get back to gas early. He has a little wiggle and heads up, and I try to cut the distance and stay down tight and uh, so this is the end of first lap now you're thinking it's raining this isn't probably smart but uh believe it or not this rain is incredibly helpful to me because the track temps were like 130 degrees it was still really hot and this was very light rain um, i'm still wide open here brian it appears had to lift staying on the outside there now he's dropped a few cars behind me and this has allowed me basically just to set sail um, He's still obviously right there, and he remains there pretty much the whole race. And I'll let this play a little while at least, but this is basically how this whole race goes. <clears throat> uh, it continues to rain. It actually starts to rain a little heavier. Um, I'll probably let it play through a few of my mistakes and show you kind of what we we're up against. But uh, for the most part, the track still had good grip the whole way through, except for a few little spots where there was sealer. Um, when that stuff gets wet, it's like ice. So I'm um, just trying to avoid that. I'll show you kind of what I did. Um, again, my tires are really good, ready to go from the hit. 
and uh, Brian's take just a little bit longer to get up to temp and then his take longer to fall off than mine do. However, in this race, with the light rain and the much cooler temperatures, uh, my fall off was almost minimal. In fact, I set my fastest lap on the fifth or sixth lap of this race, which never happens. It's always the first or the second lap um, on street tires that are your fastest lap, and after that it doesn't matter. If you're the best driver in the world, you're not going to get the, your fast lap later in the race. But in this case, um, with a little bit of rain, that wasn't the lap where I screwed up. But anyway, we'll do one more lap and I'll show you kind of what uh, the few mistakes I made and then we'll probably fast forward to the ending. But anyway, um, here we are again, coming up into the, the front stretch. I've got a decent gap, although that will close. Brian. Uh, ends up gaining on me here after I make a mistake. I believe it's this coming lap. And then uh, he stays within three, four, or five car lengths of me pretty much the whole race um, until the very end where he was having a few issues coming through this huge bump his car was cutting out on the last few laps of this race, um, just briefly cutting out. And um, I, I, I think they got that solved. I never heard what the problem was, but um, anyway. So here we are coming to the infield. Um, this spot, well, I kind of overdrove it there too, but this spot always had pretty good grip. Um, but coming up here, there's some sealer in the middle of the road, and I think I get loose right here. Yep, yeah, and I had to chase it way out wide and try to bring it back in. Um, and that cost me a bit. And uh, so I ended up from there on, I ended up just going on it with a shallow entry to avoid that sealer. And uh, basically an early apex kind of thing. And that helped me kind of stay out and um, not have to deal with that again. But you can see how much time Brian gained on me. I think I lost a little over a second on this lap just with uh, a few little bobbles there. So anyway, like I said, this race we just kind of trade places and I will uh, fast forward to the end here. <laughs> race car driver, you know Jace. Dad. Get over here. Give him a hug. Aww. Jaylee. And Jaylee, who do you think is the best race Sorry, car driver? Sorry, I'm sweaty, bud. Daddy. Get in here. Ow. My head. Love you, hun. Too. <laughs> okay. Hello everyone. It is day two. Uh, we finished race two with another win. That was awesome. Uh, we've had luck on our side both those first two races. So the first race we got lucky that Brian got hung up in traffic uh, and I was able to get a, just a big enough gap to be able to hold him off for the race. It has nothing to do with the fact that you can drive well. I'm a decent driver, but he's faster here, I think. So anyway, and then race two, I was pretty sure I'd be following him the whole race, but 
uh, I got behind him in race one or lap one, and then coming on to the high banks, you probably saw it. He slipped up a little bit, and I got back to gas early and was able to pull up next to him. And we got all the way in between turn one and two, and I think he lifted a little bit, and I was below him and got got past him there, and then was able to. Uh, the lucky part here was it was like half raining the whole race where it didn't really affect grip uh, negatively. In fact, it helped me. I set my fastest lap on the sixth lap, which never happens uh, because the tire stayed cool enough uh, because of the rain. And that's what helped me stay out in front of him. Uh, and he was there the whole race. So it was two, three car length pretty much the whole race basically, other than a few different line choices, which kind of opened and then closed the gap a little bit. But anyway, uh, we qualified again this morning, and I nipped him by less than a tenth. Uh, so we are qualified first for today, Woo! and we have two races today. Uh, we're trying to decide if we uh, are going to be facing rain or not. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out. But it's been a lot of fun. My crew has been fantastic, except for that little girl. She's like, oh hey, that one. <laughs> There's the other one. Anyway, so uh, wish me luck. We'll go try win another one. We got our full rewards weighed in. We got 150 pounds extra in the car now. Uh, same old tires, we just uh, rotated them because this place is really hard on the right front. Um, although it doesn't show that bad, but you can feel it when you're driving. It's real hard on the right front. So we did a little rotate and hope, hope that uh, helps us get us through the last two races. green flag of the third race like I said we qualified we re-qualified before this race and I barely nipped Brian on our uh, shootout laps so um, I qualified first but that didn't really matter because um, whatever advantage I maybe used to have in acceleration is no longer a thing um, I think Brian had to lift there even Jeremy lifted but still motored by me I stayed wide open um, but here goes everyone and uh, I'm just along for the ride but now we can watch some pinball action ahead of us, <clears throat> but we'll try and work through a little traffic here. Uh, it's obviously more fun to race with people than, than not, so you can see uh, Mr. Kelly got a really good start and he's off and basically set sail and now we're getting down to single file and uh, I'm trying to figure out what to do here got Jake right behind me and uh, Jeremy Boysen right in front of me and uh, luckily I'm somehow still a little faster than Jake I think everyone's a little faster than Jake in a straight line unfortunately for him but uh, everyone else ahead of me here obviously shows some, some real strength and I don't, I don't know what happened because my fast lap is still um, basically right on pace in data wise for or speed and these guys break so early that it's hard to I don't know hard to just race somebody new when you haven't raced with them the whole time um, not knowing where they're gonna break but anyway here we are side by side with boys and I'm trying to take them around the outside um, I get a little bit better exit here and uh, here's a not ideal situation I smoked the entry here and railed my splitter you can probably hear it in the audio but uh, I don't think it's damaged too bad. Uh, anyways, here I got the inside and was able to get a decent run. And I uh, get past Jeremy. And now it's about... Uh, I think I'll just play this out because um, I try to reel in Tiffany and that's about the end of my race here because the other two are long gone. 
and there's not much I can do about it. So, um, you can see Jeremy's still right there. But we're pretty good on the brakes here, and we're pretty good in the infield. And coming up here is we can reel Tiffany in pretty quick in some of these spots. And that uh, was nice to be able to tell her too and show it while she's, once I got by her, she's able to see kind of where she was able to gain some time too. So that was nice. I'm about the only one doing this. Um, I don't think anybody else really did that, and it may or may not have made any difference, but my theory was um, you're wasting energy and time going up the hill. Um, obviously, a straight wheel is faster accelerating than a turned one, but it took almost no effort to the car to turn the wheel to stay low, and then that cuts our distance, and I don't have to drive up the hill. Um, so I just gave it a try, and I don't know, I just kept doing it. I don't know if it was beneficial or not, but with these low horsepower cars, it seemed like you gotta do every little thing you can. But this was probably my favorite turn there, I was just trying to get back to gas early and uh, really get after it. And here you can see where we gained so much on Tiffany. She was just a little too timid on that, that left hand, well, both of them, the left hander and the right hander, and that gained us a bunch of positions. And, uh, but I certainly didn't have the motor to keep up with her. I was a little nervous for her too. She, that right rear kept smoking every time she hit the, the bump. And I know mine was mine would smoke, and I'd bottom out there too. It's, I wish they'd fix that, but whatever. They'll wait for somebody to put it in the wall real hard. <clears throat> now we can get a really good idea. Tiffany took a shallow entry there, and I definitely don't personally don't think that's the best way to do it but I also have a hard time drafting I'm I have believe it or not some s mechanical sympathy and uh, especially at altitude up here the car got hotter than ever and I just didn't love drafting people I just wanted to keep the car as cool as possible but yeah you can see uh, whatever work I did in the infield was quickly erased there but again, we're pretty good on the brakes, and uh, in the infield, we're pretty good. So, I was able to do a little work and scratch and claw to try and get that position. Similar story here, I was quite a bit faster through the S's. And then her shallow entry here was really bad, and I got back to gas early. Still not enough. Yet. I think next lap I get her. If not, we're just going to stop because I don't want to bore you guys to death. We still got one more race. Stick around!
got a much better exit and were able to get alongside of her. I'm waving like an idiot to Scott. Hi, Scott. He would never wave back, though. It was very rude. Anyway, we got ahead of Tiffany there. Luckily, she didn't try and challenge me in the brake zone here, so we were able to focus forward. Very little grip there. It looks weird. It's hard to roll speed there. Anyway, the rest of my race is uh, I'm in third here, and we're basically just trying to catch up to the Justin and Brian, but they're way too far out for me to catch up, um, even though they did battle for just a little bit, and I was able to close the gap some, it just wasn't enough, so that basically concludes this race for me, uh, finish third. Excited though. That's right, my buddy's excited. Although I'm not that excited over third. What do you think? Should dad try and win the next race and get first? <laughs> I was yeah. trying to win that race. You did good though, it's fun to watch you pass. Thanks. Yeah, and even if you lose I mean, that race, probably, you'll still win. It's probably more fun to see you out front, but I like to watch you pass. It's more fun to like race people. Yeah. Just put up a good fight. Excited, really good. Excited to go talk to her and probably tell her where she's losing time, which I think she figured out following me, but yeah. I'll go talk to her. start a race for so you can see it's raining uh, it had just begun raining so the track was a bit slippery to start with um, certainly not 100% grip um, but here we are and this is about right where my whole weekend falls apart not whole weekend but uh, if you look to my left you see a stud muffin move by Brian Heikotter he takes it way down the inside super deep the other guys broke early because they didn't know how slippery it was going to be because of the rain and as you can see, it is slippery, uh, but Brian made an awesome move. He had a lane, he took it, and I'm thinking, well, there it goes. Because at this point, if Brian wins this race, he wins the weekend. So I know all I can do is whatever it takes to try and uh, get this win. Because if I don't, 
my weekends uh, well I, I just don't do win the weekend then so uh, anyway I gotta get past these two in a hurry I'm trying to get straightened out as fast as possible as grip is an issue now um, especially getting back onto the straight and I, at this point I already feel like there's no way I'm catching Brian um, but the conditions are going to get worse and uh, my tires are a little bit better than these guys on Hoosiers in the rain. So not much, but a little. Uh, these, like I said, I'm on the Nankang Street tires and mine are pretty much wore out. They've been through two races and some testing. Um, so they're, they're about done. But anyway, they're better than what these Hoosiers had. So anyway, I made a nice little two for one pass there. Well, not exactly because Jensen's still there, but I think we're able to get him here if I remember correctly. Get a decent exit here. And yep, and I was able to clear him before the S's so I didn't have to leave him room there. And I pushed almost a little too hard there, but was able to keep it on the track. And now you can see Height Cotter's already having some problems. So um, now I felt like, man, I've got some hope in this race. Because it's early, we're only two laps in, three laps in, and uh, I can see him out my windshield, and I feel like I've got uh, a chance now. So now it's just a guts game. Conditions are changing every lap, and uh, staying flat through one and two isn't really a thing anymore. Um, that used to be the case, but not so much anymore. Now it's just trying to make sure you don't hit any slippery spots, because there are some. And. Uh, manage as best you can. And right there you see the sealer to my left, that's why I'm taking a shallow entry trying to avoid that sealer. And I dove in a little harder here than maybe I should have um, repeatedly, but it sure helped me seem to gain a little on him each time. And then right here is where Brian struggled every single time a little bit more than I did. I struggled there too, but it seemed like uh, coming back up onto the banks is where um, his Hoosiers just did not have any grip. Not that mine did, but I, I was part throttle there trying to, trying to keep the car straight and hooked up as much as possible. But right here, it's that bump in the wet is so scary because you're just waiting for grip to just go away and you to slide up in the wall. But uh, this spot was still really good. I was able to stay um, close to where I was normally braking, um, so grip there wasn't much of an issue. And you can see how much time we gained. And Brian's out there just a little wider than I would like to, and I think we gained on him right there too, um, just from him being out on that sealant or sealer a little bit. And painted surfaces like that right now are you don't want to touch that painted surface like right there is there's no grip so staying off that is helpful um, although that one the left hander which I'll show you in a minute uh, is still worth taking because it straightens your your turn so much but anyway now I'm like man I got this guy um, we're not even halfway into this race and I know I'm faster. It's just a matter of where am I going to pass him. He's still faster in a straight line. Um, and through here, I feel like I could gain a little more confidence than him. Um, although I was taking a kind of a different weird line. But uh, most importantly, I just did not want to touch this guy. I uh, that was number one for me, is I want to make sure if I pass him, I want it to be clean. I do not want to touch him at any point um, for a number of reasons, but I don't want to be ever be that guy. So right now I know I got the guy covered, and it's just a matter of making the pass and where. Although he's so good, um, he rarely makes mistakes. And his car is stronger than mine, where it would be the easiest spot to make a pass. So I'm going to have to get creative. And I figured it was going to end up being in the brake zone, because I felt like I could carry more speed through 1 and 2 here. If he's hitting the brakes there a little bit too. So you can see how much faster I am. Um, he blocked low. 
and there I saw Tiffany in the wall. She's okay, everyone. But now I'm looking for yellow flags, and so I could have pushed in. I would have stayed in and pushed harder there and probably tried to go around the outside of them because I was looking for yellow flags. Uh, there were none yet. So we're going to continue making our trip around the track here. And I'm still looking for yellow flags. There's a flag stand straight ahead there. By the way, these flag stands here are not flag stands. They're just a guy standing in the crowd. And so had there been yellow flags there, it would have been really hard to see unless they were shaking them like crazy, which hopefully they would be, but um, not the most ideal flag stations here. So we are still racing. Um, still no yellow flags, but we're coming to the flag stand here. And now Scott's waving a yellow. Um, but it's just a single yellow, so we're still racing. There's just no passing. So right now you can see the safety trucks on the left. They're headed out, but uh, we're still under just local yellow. So I'm, we're still racing past a, a car out here. This is not the ideal thing to do. There was a, just a problem, communication problem. Obviously that shouldn't happen, but um, is what it is, I guess. So now um, there is a yellow. That's still just a single, I believe. So I'm still stuck just hanging out behind Height Cotter. And I heard after this race, I believe it's Jensen that's behind me. Um, both Height Cotter and I passed under yellow in a previous race. And so Jensen was getting excited, thinking we're dumb enough to do it again, which we probably are, but luckily we didn't, because here come some lap cars. And um, actually, no, the pace car's out here now. So we've all slowed down, and I will pick us back up here after the yellow. So here we are coming back to the green after the yellow single file restart. Conditions are even worse. Uh, my windshield started to fog up on the last lap of the caution. So now not only is it raining harder and harder, uh, but my windshield's fogging up. And uh, it's become really difficult to, uh, to see <laughs> as well as drive. So now I believe Boyson is behind me at this point and I have not even really developed a strategy on what I'm going to try and do, but I know I have to get past Height Cotter to win the weekend. If I don't, it's his. Um, so at this point, I'm just trying to figure out where I'm stronger, and I still feel like one and two is going to be my chance, but do I have the balls to really push it in there? And uh, you're about to find out if I did. can see coming up here onto the front stretch this is where Brian's really struggling to get grip and I was able to do a little bit better job and now we're coming to the white flag and he protects low which is fine with me because I like to enter hard, high regardless although he comes up there anyway um, and he really he sent it in pretty hard too like he, we couldn't have done much more with the grip that was there um, I am still wide open here, just hoping, hoping for a mistake, basically, which doesn't happen, because he's that good. I guess he is a professional, was a professional driver, probably, well, I guess he still is, but anyway, here we are, last lap. I'm just trying to hopefully, I know that he slips coming up off to the banking, so that's really my, my focus right now. Um, trying to be as close to him as possible right here so that I can get hopefully get a better run to the finish line. Um, I take one last look in my rear view. You can see uh, Boysen's a fair bit back um, and it is just uh, headlights so I'm not even worried about him anymore. I take a shallow line, I get a better run and here we are coming to the finish and now I'm backwards and uh, we should probably rewatch this a few times. Let me figure out how to do that but um, I'll talk about it here for a second all right I've slowed it down to quarter speed um, so again I take a last look in my rear view and I've got a good gap over Jeremy um, here so I wasn't even thinking about him and I should tell you too this is I'm not putting um, at least not 100% blame on Jeremy. If anything, it's probably more my fault because he was there and he has every right to that position. Um, but here's my thought. 
I thought I had plenty of gap on him and all I see is just light there. Um, so I've stopped looking in the rear view. I'm looking to the right um, as we're coming up to the finish line because whichever one of us gets to that finish first wins the weekend and then bam, uh, Jeremy puts it in my door, which um, is partially because my angle, I was aiming to the very bottom of the track trying to cut the distance as much as I could and I did not know Jeremy was there. Um, so that is my fault for not knowing he was there. Um, I feel like I should blame conditions, <laughs> uh, which is not really, I mean, you can't really do that. It's, it's not the conditions fault that I ran down on Jeremy. Um, and I also really did not expect him to have a crazy exit like that. And really that's something that I probably should have thought about is, um, he was also on street tires. He's on, I believe my old street tires, which are much better in the rain than what I'm on now. Um, but that's a different story. But anyway, um, so I didn't even think about it, but he's front wheel drive too. And he was definitely much better there, um, at getting out, but I sure did not expect him to be in my door at that point. So I was just trying to win the race and I'd basically forgotten all about, uh, the fact that he was even back there. So, um, I felt like after the race, watching this video back, I felt like, man, I feel like he had still had room to turn down and give me room. And, and at the very least, if, if he knew that I didn't see him, which turns out was the case, um, I would have hoped he would have lifted to save damage from in two cars. Um, that's me. I think what I would have done personally, but, um, you know, if somebody's going to run me down to the grass, you have to make a decision. Are you going to go down to the grass and, and let off? Or are you going to try and stay in it? Or are you going to put it through someone's door? I guess that's a decision a person has to make, but it's not his fault that I ran him down there. That's, and he has every right to be there. So, um, really just a rough way to end. It would have been so much more fun to have played that one out and see if I had just enough because I think that would have been a photo finish for Brian and I and that was like I said to win the weekend so um, that would have been a really fun way to end um, but again it's as much or more my fault than it is Jeremy's so rough way to end that is for sure um, we did have some some car damage as you can see here by the way I am reversing past the start line or the finish line I'm just trying to finish the lap although it took me forever to think about even doing that because at that instant moment, I didn't even care as I was sliding through the grass. But um, anyway, it was still a super fun weekend. Um, we had tons of fun, great, uh, great time with friends. And uh, we got two wins. We actually have the most wins of anybody in the series this year so far. Uh, but we've also had a lot of DNFs and poor finishes and some bad luck and getting uh, spun a few times and so yeah we have not been consistent and that's something that needs to improve if I plan to get anywhere in in the season points at the end of the year so uh, we've shown some some promise though and um, I'm not really sure what we'll do for the end of the year where so uh, there is no budget left to go racing so um, I don't know <laughs> what will will do but we are signed up to go finish up this season and i think we'll try and do that i think i'm gonna have to sell my other car to or at least parts from my other car to um, get through this end of the year but either way i want to thank you all for watching this was a really fun race really fun uh, weekend and um, learned a lot too I don't, I don't think this car is necessarily as good as it needs to be if we're going to be going the rain racing so might have to invest in some wipers and uh, Rain-X didn't seem to do the job. We even did uh, the anti-fog on the inside, and that didn't seem to cut the mustard either. So we're going to have to figure out some something to make this car a little bit better in the rain, both visibility and driving. Uh, at the very end there, you might have heard it. The car was breaking up on the very last lap, and uh, I need to find out if that was water ingestion or another issue. So anyway, thank you again for watching. If you've stuck around this long, you're the best. Remember to smash buttons and remember that we love you. Bye-bye.